So yeah, welcome to uh, our sort of, well, not sort of, welcome to our webinar about the Floria App Manager version five. Uh, this was announced on a bit of a short notice uh, and I'm really happy that quite a few of you could join. Um, so the, the, the purpose of this is to uh, help uh, people or give people a bit of background about the new version, uh, show you a few tips and tricks and, and basically uh, get some uh, details shared with you that make it easier for you to uh, get uh, used to the new new version. So um, together with me here today, we have Greg, who is at the Dorsa Britain. Hello. Uh, we also I have uh, Jose, who is our lead developer on the, on the app. He's also joined us. So we have a bit of tech support uh, from uh, from Jose as well. If there's any sort of extra geeky questions, um, but the most most important part we're going to talk about is the app manager. Uh, but we might talk a bit about the app as well if there are any questions about that. Uh, we've set aside an hour, but I don't think. Well, we'll see how it turns. Uh, you know how it proceeds. It might go a bit quicker, but um, uh, we'll see. So let's um, just go straight in. We all prepared a few slides here. Um, now, we it is you know, when new products come out, you you give it a version number, and sometimes the version number indicates uh, the sort of the significance of of the upgrade. And we decided to call this version five because there's a, a quite a lot of significant changes. Most of them are not sort of something you will see directly when you use the product, but uh, from a practical point of view. Uh, the most important part is what we've listed in the first first sentence here. Uh, up until now, Iris and, and Floria App Manager has been very tightly integrated. Uh, and that's worked okay for, for quite a few years. Uh, but in the last year or so, there's been a quite a number of updates uh, with Iris where we need to also then provide a compatible version. Uh, and that's caused a bit of... Um, uh, if you look on our website, you can see that you can still download like five different versions of, of, of the app manager and people get confused of which one to install. And there's a lag when there's a new version of Iris, we need to then test and come with a new version of, of, of the app manager. So this is sort of turned into a bit of a problem. And now with COVID as well, with people you work from home, it's even caused even more problems, you might say. So, so we looked at this problem and uh, decided that instead of having this very tight integration from a technical point of view. Uh, we redesigned the app manager so it will now use the data import engine to supply the data. The benefit of that is that uh, these two products can be installed more independently. Uh, they need to be on the same computer, but uh, if there's a new version of app manager, uh, we will then only have one app manager to supply to you. We don't work now, up until now, we've been basically managing four different versions of the same product, which has been a quite a bit of a, yeah, a lot of extra work really. So going forward, hopefully this will cause less disruption and problems for people when they upgrade. Uh, and um, we already got a sense of that uh, then, because um, on Monday, 431 of of, uh, of Iris was uh, rolled out and we tested and saw that everything worked fine there as well. So the version five of Floria App Manager works for, I don't know how many versions we tested on, should I say, was it six, six different versions of Iris we've tested on, I think six or seven? Yes, it was from 3.6.4 to 4.3.1, no. Yeah. yeah. So it was quite six or seven versions there. So, so in the background, a lot of stuff going on that uh, uh, for you, hopefully, uh, some easier days from uh, uh, when you go to download and decide whether you want to upgrade one or one or the other product, you are now more independently uh, open to decide. Uh, not, it doesn't need to be, you need, don't need to wait for us um, most of the time. The only thing I would like to say is that we will still try to, as soon as we know there's a new version of Iris, we'll test it. So we will uh, look at, Look at our website to see if we have tested the new version of Iris you're thinking of installing. We, we will probably do that as soon as we can. That's not normally what we can say there. Um, so uh, any questions about that particular uh, aspect? 
Oh, okay, cool. Uh, the next part, uh, the, the, just to mention one sort of aspect of the new version that is worth noting. In the previous version, uh, we pushed the data to the inbox. Sometimes that would fail and then you would have uh, problems that would you know, prevent you from doing anything because the whole process of pushing the data to the inbox failed. And then you have the next step where you push the data from the inbox into Iris. That could also fail. And that was the same thing. Then if one of those things failed, everything failed. Uh, now with the new version, we are processing things sequentially. That means that we're pushing one thing after the other into the into Iris, and 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 if there is a, something that will fail, then we have processed it up until that point. Uh, this is uh, this is you know just the way it is, uh, and uh, we we looked at trying to do this in a in a similar fashion, but that was basically impossible. Um, I, there's an upside and a downside to both our solutions, and um, um, uh, I think overall you shouldn't have any problems when you push data in as, as a rule. <laughs> that you know normally everything should go smoothly anyway, and if it goes, if there are any problems, it's usually uh, related to what we call stale data, uh, meaning that you've had a user who that have used the app. And the data on the app is, is several days old for some reason. And then there's been some changes on the desktop system. Some records have been removed, no, drop downs changed, locations changed or something like that. That can then cause these kind of problems. So, so it's not, uh, that's typically the most common scenario of having problems anyway. So, um, so that, that I don't think we'll see, uh, uh, we can't, I don't anticipate people finding this a big sort of change that will negatively impact the sort of your daily life, as it were. I don't know if Greg, you, you've used the app manager for quite a bit. Have you had any experience or thought about that aspect? No, I mean, uh, I started using it at uh, one of the uh, earlier iterations and uh, there were a few issues that were uh, particular to our setup, uh, which have been rectified. Um, I think the whole idea of utilizing the data import engine through Iris BG makes sense because um, as long as they keep up with their uh, data import engine taking data and uh, putting it in the right places in Iris BG, then it uh, shouldn't fail. Um, there's, there's a few trade-offs. I mean, the nice thing uh, with using the inbox was you were able to uh, jump right into the record and edit it as you were updating uh, it row by row, or if you had imported the whole um, set of uh, updates. But uh, there's a trick I can show you later about how to find out the uh, same changes that were made using the inbox or the the uh, the data import. Um, but it just makes it a second step. But uh, I think the uh, trade-off is worth it. I think what you get out of the uh, new system makes it easier on the developers, makes it more seamless with the system, and uh, just a different way of uh, going about the process of uh, doing the same thing. Yeah, 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 thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've had a discussion about that particular aspect of uh, following up those changes that have already been submitted into Iris. Uh, we have some ideas about that, but at the moment, you're right. You're you're sort of running two separate, more two separate system in a more, in a more like so. So yeah, um, uh, we will show some demos. Greg will share his screen and show a few things around the next point. So uh, in in uh, Iris, uh, you probably most of you can recall there's a reconciliation screen where you can see the changes coming in. Uh, we've now added that into the app manager so that you can compare changes uh, or look at uh, what's coming in before you send it to the system. Uh, one thing that we've added that I think is quite useful uh, and uh, that uh, will give you the uh, ability to revert individual changes. So if you see that uh, a user has changed A, B, C, and D uh, of some information, and then, then you can um, then you can revert a single line of entry. But uh, Greg will show us that shortly. Uh, the other part, 
is, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just getting people who are asking to join the webinar. So I'm just uh, <laughs> sending, <laughs> sending in a, a, an except there. Um, the other part uh, that we also have added, the, the, the benefit now that we're using the data import for all the data means that if there is a problem with one entry or one particular record, uh, we have the data ready to the same format. So you can actually export the file and look at it, make alterations to that one record and then import it manually. So that's also a nice uh, kind of extra bonus uh, benefit of the approach we now use. Which we will also show you. Yeah. If I can add one more benefit that you might not mention uh, for the uh, Power Geek, um, if you're having any questions about uh, how your your data import uh, uh, spreadsheets should look, um, you can easily go into the App Manager's folders and find the imports that have been done and find the exact um, uh, you know column names and everything that was used to import that data. So it's a way you can uh, uh, have a uh, way to to easily see how the edits were were imported. So if you wanted to add a, a bunch of accessions um, manually new uh, from you know data import, you could add one from the app and then open up the template and fill out the uh, data with more and just run the uh, data import. But uh, it's just a uh, a uh, power geek uh, way to to uh, find the uh, the uh, template that you need for a data import. <laughs> no, that's a good good point. It's a, it's like a data import tutor at the yeah. same time. That's a, right. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. a good point. Yeah. So uh, and the the tutor is Jose. Uh, we I should think. Yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll show a few examples uh, after I've gone through the list here. Um, the other part now, <clears throat> as we are running uh, sort of separate. Um, uh, system, you will then also authenticate on the app manager in the same way you do on the app with the pin code, the same pin code as you have on the app. Um, so that that uh, and there is an option here also to to uh, remember me as you have on the app. So that's up to you how you do that. The last thing I want to mention of what's new is that uh, we are also working on a completely new version of the handheld. Uh, it's going to be in version five, uh, and uh, this will be ready in uh, probably in hope hope to start shipping in October already uh, before the end of the month. Now, this will not appear to you as a very it's a bit the same story here. There's a significant technological upgrade. We have we have uh, we have changed quite a lot of the things, but this will in be installed separately from the App Store, uh, so that you can gradually switch over to the new one. Uh, we decided to do this because it makes it much easier for us to roll it out. Uh, the problem with app management uh, or managing the apps in the app store is that people upgrade uh, or most people have their apps upgraded automatically, but not everybody. So we have, but and we can't control that. So we have to manage this kind of ecosystem of, of different versions on the app and people having different versions of the app manager, people have different versions of Iris. So it's uh, <laughs> now we're trying to sort of curtail some of that jungle uh, and, and we're getting a bit better at it by making this particular step. And the next one with Floria app manager or Floria handheld five, we're also putting in some capabilities there so we can give people notification that they're running a very old version and those kind of things. So overall, the whole ecosystem will hopefully be Smoother for everybody. Um, so let's uh, uh, move on to. So the the one thing we also have put up here is that the requirements um, now with having a separate uh, installation, you might say, we also have a need for a separate database connection. Uh, uh, the app manager only requires to have read access to your Iris database. Uh, for those of you who use our cloud service, we can set that up for you automatically so you don't have to worry about it. But for those who have an on-premise database, that's just, uh, you know, that's one aspect when you install the new product, you need to set up a new database connection. And also, because of the use of data import, you also need a data import license. Uh, we've checked, and of all the people who use the app, there's a small percentage. Uh, most most people seem to have the data import, but not all, which will 
uh, you know, that will incur an extra cost. Unfortunately, uh, we thought about this a lot. So we thought to give you some sort of, um, what should I say, compensation, uh, we have decided to uh, give everybody an extra license uh, with a free uh, subscription for one year as well. Uh, and we do that for everybody, regardless of whether you hit, we, we sort of thought, because we've already bought the, <laughs> how do we do this? So so we anyway, we, we go for everybody get it, even if you have the data import. Uh, we will also uh, allow, if you want to start sharing your data online uh, to anybody. So uh, for those who may not be familiar with the app, when you, go into the app, you have the option to log in or you have the option to explore gardens. And the explore gardens option is available uh, for those gardens who have decided to push their data online uh, as a public data set. It's fully anonymized. And that's an option we now will offer to everybody. Before we offered it to uh, large gardens who, who had a bit of uh, extra need. But now if you, if you have a small garden but you still want other staff members to have a read view of your collection on the app. Uh, you can do that, just let us know, and then you can just do that from the app manager. So uh, when, I, when I mentioned uh, a, an anonymized data set, it, uh, what it does, it will change all the names of the users, the, the people who change the, the, you know, there's a drop down of staff members and stuff. All those people will be called John and Karen and whatever. And uh, all the comments will also be written over into some Latin text. Uh, so, so you and and we also can use uh, restricted material will not go out, etc. So it's uh, basically following similar um, patterns that you will have if you had Garden Explorer in terms of what data will be published out. So you you also have restricted, you know, maybe nursery or something that will not go out either. Those are, things are configurable. Uh, so that 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 is then available to everybody at once. So hopefully that will uh, even out the burden for those of you who have to purchase the uh, upgrade of the data import, which I think is starting, it's a couple of hundred dollars for, for the smaller little licenses and then upwards, depending on the size of the garden. Um, okay, so any questions from anybody around this? Um, no? Wait for demos, we'll, we'll come with that very soon. Uh, there we go. And let's see, let's go to the next one. Uh, here's a that, question. That is, yeah, here's a question. In the chat, yes, if you look up in the chat. Oh, I have too many screens there. Thank you for okay, chats. So, uh, uh, oh, I can, I can, I can it, with public data set, are you moving to what might be used on our websites? Might you provide abilities to support the collection support of our websites? That's Elaine. Oh yeah, uh, well, this, uh, so it's a very good question. First, I will just see where on earth did my chat fe feature go? I just changed my screen resolution so everything moved around. Anyway, um, the, the, the point for the app here is it's a product designed for staff members. Uh, and, and that's, that's uh, where, where this, uh, that's the key target. And, and uh, it's not, um, what shall I say, designed for visitation, in any way. Uh, we could of course look at uh, uh, resolving that other problem or, or looking at visitation solutions in general. But for now, this is our focus in, in this uh, with, with, with the Floria app. And um, uh, yeah, that, that's the, the story here. And that's also, so when you, when you see here, oh, we can create a public data set, that wouldn't satisfy your needs for visitation uh, experience. It's more for peer, more for if you have uh, maybe a few staff members who work around in the garden, uh, you, you, you don't feel like it merits an extra license because they only would occasionally need to look at the data, uh, but then they would find it really handy when they needed it, but they, and they're not going to make changes. So that's the kind of use case where you think, okay, let's publish a data set, or you get people coming over, maybe you have cl training classes, uh, educational things where there are horticulturalists or people who are interested in more of the gritty details of the plants. Uh, but it's all about the plants. It's very little information about taxonomy, for example. It doesn't say, it just says the plant name in the system and nothing about, uh, you know, distribution and those kind of things that a visitor might find interesting. So, yeah. And if I can add too, it's also sort of a, sort of a uh, 
trial. So if uh, somebody is uh, is uh, possibly wanting to add this to their their RSVG install um, and uh, not sure if it's going to work for them, they could download somebody else's data set and see how it works and uh, try it with other people's data before they uh, commit to the purchase of the product. So it's like a, a trial system as well. Yep. And, and uh, just to announce that, for if there is anybody on the call who doesn't have the app yet, uh, we can also, you know, there's no problem of actually now installing App Manager getting it up and running, not buying a license, but just publish one data set, <laughs> uh, which is uh, read only. And then you can look at your own collection and see how it works. So that's also uh, yeah. an option. Uh, so that makes it easy for you to see how it will behave and, and feel on, on the app. Um, and you can do uh, trainings that way for your staff with it you know, before it's, it's even purchased. So yep. we, we, we um, our um, guides use it quite a lot. I find the public data set function quite a lot. They found it and they all really liked just being able to use it going around. So it's found a use, even though I hadn't publicized it. <laughs> yeah, that's cool to hear. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that's a, you know, it falls because you think, okay, well, then if you wanted to help those guides, you could have created a task for the guides that listed all the plants that they might want to be interested. You could create sort of like, um, what shall I say, semi tours or something. Uh, so you can, you can do a few things to facilitate or use the app for those kind of use cases as well. Yeah, that's true. Okay, thanks for that. I'll, I'll have a look at that idea. Uh, okay, yeah. So uh, let's uh, now, if we can switch over to, to Greg's uh, screen and then maybe you can um, share your, um, uh, I'm just gonna make you a host, Greg, and then I'll just to answer what uh, Elaine is asking here too. Uh, she was asking if uh, if if uh, most people use the app for inventory. Um, I do have to say that we do. Uh, I assume uh, because having the uh, data with you in the field uh, on a phone or a tablet is much easier than carrying around a laptop and working on live data. Uh, we use it for a nursery for uh, creating plant sale lists and things like that. We can make tasks on the fly, um, so it's quite useful for building lists of things and doing plant inventory. So, yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, let me pull up uh, my phone. I uh, have some data. If you can see on here, I have the six on there right here. This is uh, what needs to be uploaded to the cloud. So upload changes, uh, continue. And that's uh, uploading data. So it, if just in case you don't have the app or use it, you can sort of see what happens here. Um, data uh, upload complete. So I set up uh, a variety of things. Um, I set up a photo, uh, an accession verification. Um, I set up uh, uh, some changes to uh, label needs and things like that. So let me share my screen then here. And make sure I have things minimized here. Okay, let's see. Okay, you should be able to see that. Here is the Floria App Manager 5. Um, this was the old icon, so this uh, this is the old one. This is the new one with the nice the nice leaf. So. Uh, Here's my login. So you have your pin that you use to access the app is the same pin you get into here with. Um, and then uh, it, just, uh, save, it uh, saves it just like it does on the app in case you forget, <laughs> which I do. I have it written down on the computer here. <laughs> just, just a comment from Greg as well that uh, you can, as you saw here, you can have the version five installed alongside version four. Mm -hmm. So you can run both of them. Uh, if you want to sort of have a smooth transition. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's what yeah. you're doing as well, right? So. Yeah, because I think our uh, plant records person, Jessica, I think she still uses, well, she's off today, so I can't ask her, but uh, she might still use the older version presently, but uh, we'll see once everything is tested and released, we'll see how it goes. So this is the, uh, the uh, current data set. I uploaded a, a new one this morning, downloaded it, made my changes. So if you go into pending changes, 
it shows you uh, all the different users that had uh, submitted their their uh, data to the cloud, which I just did on my phone. You saw me click upload. So this is uh, that just came in the the six changes. So if I wanted to see what was actually changed here, um, in the past I would just upload it to the inbox in the in the other app, and then I would open Iris BG, go into the inbox, and then I could see the changes. Here we do it uh, all within the app manager. So I'm going to review changes. If I know it's garbage and I just want to get rid of it, I can delete it, export it to a file, but I, I want to see what's in there. So we're going to go in here and it actually downloads it back from the cloud into the app manager. Uh, insert Jeopardy theme music here. <laughs> Well, if you have lots of lots of photos and things, this depending on your broadband connection, you know, it might take yeah. a few okay. extra seconds. Yeah. Right. So, um, so one of the, the the coolest things is just like before, when you send things things to the inbox, it sends along the accession uh, as well as the um, accession entry and um, the uh, uh, images and material, which are which is the items. Um, if you don't want to see if, if you only want to see what's changed, like I've not updated anything on this accession because I have show changes only, if I clear that, you can see all the records for that, that individual record, but nothing has changed between the file that uh, I uploaded this morning and the changes I just sent today. So I can ignore all those changes. So I can clear a checkbox from anything that has no change. And that just means there's really no it's just sending less data to Iris. It's uh, sending changes that have no changes. So there's no reason to do that. Okay, this is the one that I actually sent a verification uh, on a record. And I'll show you that when I'm done with what the uh, change actually was. So we're gonna keep that one. Can I just comment as well? Uh, so we're, we're still, so the reason you will find accessions uh, submitted that doesn't have any changes uh, is that we always send over the accession for if there is an item that has changed. So, so the, the sort of the accession related to the item will be part of the actual uh, data that comes up. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, like it's required to go with it. Um, so, these were uh, okay. I've never seen this before. This uh, isn't supposed to happen on on the screen here. <laughs> uh, Oh, why are you trying to? Was I trying to send you an email that uh, I have these assessment entries? I've never sent one before, so I hadn't tested that. Let's see yeah, I, I noticed also that you're running version 508. I think that's not exactly the latest version as well. It's, but um, maybe avoid those entries and see if that might be those problem. I don't know. Okay. Yep. I just want to see if I if I clear these without clicking on the data, will it? Uh... So they're still they're still debugging a few things, but the, this was just uh, I just wanted to test um, an assessment. So we just have a live on the screen something that uh, that the Jose has to check out now. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I think I think actually I think it's fixed in uh, 109, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, yeah. So uh, again, I'm clearing the accession updates for the ones I didn't need, and I'm keeping the one for the one that did have a change. And I have a new image that I I will upload. And then some updates to some item records. This was just an oak that I was reviewing. This was, I said it at the beginning, I was out with a, a legacy donor. And uh, this was the tree she might want to label. So I sent a comment um, for me to note for myself. And I'm just going to write this number down real quick and show you 16.2. I don't want to update that in the records. So I'm just going to revert that. So I'm not going to send that information. Um, this one has a comment, a condition change, uh, label status change, 
uh, update. And this one also has an update to label status and condition and uh, inventory date. So now. Hey, before you do that, Greg, can you just mm -hmm. show people also switch back to show so that people get a sense of how it looks mm -hmm. if you then see the whole record? Sometimes you want to see the change in context of all the other data. So you can switch forth and back and, uh, and then uh, decide. Uh, and I think the, the revert thing is particularly useful. Uh, so this is a reminder, I will repeat that uh, problem of stale data. Uh, you know, you, we've had uh, one person who had problems. They, they've had a, a phone sort of, uh, not being used for three weeks. And then they started to keep on starting to record information and they sent, submitted data to the accessions that have been deleted, which is quite unusual. <laughs> so, so anyway, but then also when you compare, you're comparing your data with the data that's on the main system. And of course, other data had changed over time as well. So not only had it changed some of the data on the on the phone, but the old data uh, had also changed on the desktop. So then the revert thing can be very useful to to sort of um, uh, yeah. The key point is don't don't uh, don't uh, try to avoid stale data. Really, that's that helps a bit. Yeah. Yeah. The only uh, these are all changes being made. I'll, I will show you. Uh, once I get into the information, but uh, um, these are all changes that uh, I don't really need to follow up on, uh, except for the image. I'll go into the image and then I'll go into the one uh, accession record that uh, had an update to show you. So you see how it says on here 2015 200, that's our accession number. And then uh, this one has its accession number here. Uh, I'll show you how to find those back in Iris to find out what uh, you, know, you might want to see uh, on screen of what's changed or if you wanted to follow up and fill out some more information. So at this point, I can go ahead and uh, submit selected. And it, it again verifies your ability to make a database connection to Iris BG. And right now it's creating um, uh, CSV or, or Excel files, you know, you know, you know, spreadsheet files to run uploads into import data. Just uh, to a geek detail for anybody who's extra interest. So these files will be put on a hidden folder or uh, a folder that you can have a look at. And that's really useful if there are any technical problems with one particular update. So just to note that these files will be uh, available on your drive and they will be cleaned up uh, so between um, Every session, I think, uh, is that correct, Jose? Every every time you run it, next time you run it, the old last one will be cleaned up. You have the option to keep all of them, but basically they are deleted uh, as you can. Especially when you, most of them are deleted uh, right after the processing, but uh, some might stay behind. Depends on uh, if it was or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Uh, there's also a, a setting if you go in the menu. There's also the option to go to the folder directly that has the uh, the last processed files. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So as I was saying before, the uh, the uh, geek tip for uh, finding out how to, to create import files, say you wanted to import a lot of photos you had in folders um, and you wanted to see what that data import file would look like. You could, you could upload one photo this way and then you could uh, edit that spreadsheet and then fill it out for all the other photos you have with their 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 path on your computer and it would uh, follow suit to upload those all in the uh, the uh, data import engine okay so we are basically done with this point now so i'll go back to here um, so instead of going to inbox where we would have before we go down to uh, import data and we want to find out what has been successfully accepted. So I select accepted from the list and search. And you'll see as of the current day here, it sent three template files over, one accession update, one item update, uh, or one file with item updates and one image update file. So in the accession update, we can look to see, this was the one that uh, I put the verification comment in. Um, 
So it is, if I go back to twenty fifteen two hundred, you can see here um, what it didn't do for whatever reason, and maybe I, I didn't fill it out, but I need to put my name in there. Um, I don't know. I can not kind of you know double check that to make sure it works. It's the first time I've tried that as well, but uh, clear that one out. Okay. So anyway, uh, um, I I, uh, I compared the look of this plant with the description, and just as a uh, comparison, just a comparison verification, the plant matches the description of this plant. As you can see, it's a variegated foliage tree, so matches the description of what it's supposed to appear like. So that's good there. Um, go back. I can uh, look at the item record changes, and uh, we changed. Um, this is the one that didn't really have any change. I didn't. Uh, I I hit revert on it, but it sent the file anyway with no changes. So you can see it doesn't do anything if you don't send anything. Um, this limelight magnolia is the one that I have to also update. Uh, you can see the comments here is what changed. So um, this was a, another legacy tree that I have to enter in. So this is a note for myself to go in and make changes to that. And this Aburiyama here was one I inventoried. So let's see, that one is... Um, Just to comment a bit on that normally, I suppose from, from most gardens, when you have submitted the changes, the work is done. Uh, but in your case, you, you're you just showing us, which is great, you know, that you can right. do, uh, you can look into the data import and, and, and see what went in. Uh, there right. were a question here also, if Iris is not open, that's, that's not a problem. Uh, right. uh, the, the data import process will be kicked up and, and sort of carry on in the background, regardless of whether Iris is open or not. Mm -hmm. So the only requirement is that Iris is actually installed on the same computer. That's the only thing that that is uh, required. Uh, and then there's another question here. Uh, so what situation would call for using the inbox screen now? Yeah, the inbox uh, is uh, not used for the app anymore, but for those, uh, there are a few gardens who still use the old mobile version. They will, they still use the inbox, but for others, then the inbox uh, doesn't really apply anymore. Uh, when you switch over completely to the version five, you can go into your access control and remove access to the inbox, and then the screen will disappear from your from your um, uh, navigation panel on the left there as well. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So if you're logged in as administrator or um, or uh, I created one back one that was called records manager which is basically a clone of the of the of the administrator but it's uh, uh then assigned to whichever user is the records records administrator at the time so it puts in the correct person's name and and initials but then they have all the screens up screens that are that are available and they're able to edit everything that's edit that's editable um so any questions from that that's just a quick and dirty show of the import, how it worked successfully. Hi, um, Courtney here from Smithsonian Gardens. I had a question. Um, we use the app, like users in the field will make changes to item statuses. And then myself in the office will go into the inbox and decide, well, you know, I'll accept in the inbox, go to the item management, mm -hmm. and decide whether I want, you know, those changes were correct or not. Is that still something that I would need to do or are those changes made in the app manager now? Yeah, the uh, the changes that are sent up would be uh, what you reviewed in the uh, app manager here under the uh, the review changes button. So that's where you see the, the before and after data. Great, so if I saw like, I saw that the yellow highlights showed changes mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. I saw those changes and decided that was not correct, I just uncheck the the entry in the list before I submit uh -huh. it, and that will correct. You can, so you can do it two ways. You can either uncheck the entry, and it won't send that line at all, 
or if there's multiple changes to one item, you can revert individual changes within that, that item. So say, say they sent a label type, an inventory date, a status, a condition, and you said, uh, I'm not worried about label type, you can revert label type, but it'll still send all the rest of those edits made to that, that, that individual record. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to, to, to sort of supplement, you, the workflow now for you would be to, instead of using the inbox, you use App Manager to look at the changes and decide whether you should submit them or not. And as Greg said, you can also partially submit one individual record by reverting uh, specific values. Um, so I don't know if you can see any of, if there are any changes you can see on the old, old records when you look, them, look at them. Just look at something up here that was sent the other day. So, um, again, nothing. Yeah. These are all. These are all accepted, so it's not showing edits because there's no distinction. I mean, right now the uh, current data and the old data is the same because these were all accepted previously. Sure. So the that column on the right hand side, the new values, that's editable. Like you can type right in there. Um, is that where you would be making that revert the changes? No, there would be uh, uh, the word revert right oh, here okay. on the side. You would just click revert and it would go from being highlighted with a change back to what it was previously. Fantastic. Yeah. And then if you just wanted to go in manually, you could just type in your accession number in Iris and, and uh, change something manually that way as well. So thank you. And what I've been talking with. Uh, uh, the Florida folks here about is uh, if there was some way in the future maybe to have uh, a quick and dirty task list of all the accessions changed during one of these imports that you could just go in manually and see them without having to go into the data import engine and find out what was accepted but that's still something they're they, they are considering yeah i love the uh, thank you for the the floria folks so that's good for you folks yeah. <laughs> okay. i was just too lazy to list both of your names so <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and stop my share and then uh, turn the screen back over. There we go. Yeah, I I did uh, find so I can I found a, a sample data set that we're tested on here. So I, uh, I can share the screen quickly. Well, oh, yeah, no, I need to revert myself to host. Um, how does that? Can I ask in? a quick question? Absolutely. On the uh, when you were showing what you could see on the Floria app, there was no plant name. There was just numbers. Is that how it normally is? Because I'm one of the people that are is clearly unfamiliar with the app. Um, if you if you're back in the, I don't know if I can reshare here real quick or something, but let me see. Uh, Greg, but while you do that, could you? I, I, I gave you the host permission, so you need to hand host over to me again, I think. <laughs> no, I mean, I'll, let me just share again. Yeah, really yeah, I'll do that first. Yeah. Okay, so here, this uh, if you're in material, you are correct. It's only showing the accession number. But you can see here, 87122, if you click on the accession, you can see that that's, a, uh, that's an I apple. See. Gotcha. So you, that's, that's why it's nice for the accession to, to come over with it so that you can uh, coordinate between 9175 being uh, just a number that went to a stump and realize that that was a, a, it was a Canisiparus uh, and Deliensis that was actually cut down, so. So you really have to at, uh, click on what, uh, accession to see the information just for the accession, not for the item. That was also something we discussed, and I thought Havard had said that possibly they might do like a status screen up here at the top that might show the accession data for what you're seeing down here when you're on material. But I'm not sure if. if uh, yeah, that that I, I think it's likely, like so many other things, that we will see some some uh, what should I say tweaks to this when mm -hmm. we see how people use it and uh, and we get this kind of feedback. And it makes a lot of sense. I can see now when you have like three or six changes here, but when you got uh, 50 or 60, it quickly becomes a bit of a jungle. And 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 then when you look at a, at a plant, 
uh, or in material here, you want to probably know maybe the plant name would be useful. Yes. Uh, I suppose, yeah. Let me find something here that has, okay, this one has 30 changes. <laughs> So again, here, yeah, like like you're saying, if you're down here, we have all these checklist entries. If you're on this material item here, uh, eighteen four ninety nine, it's going to be a while to get back up here and find what eighteen four ninety nine was. You can sort that. by identifier, Greg. Might help for the moment. But, uh... If you click on the identifier column, Greg. The identifier column. In the top, the top. list. Um, oh, the header of the top list. Straight up. up there we go. Yeah. Click there. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You can sort them so all the uh, accessions and material and everything are are grouped together. So you had this change to material. Yeah. And then you can see what the plant was right adjacent to it without having to sort back up and down. You are correct. You can sort it by the accession number, and that way everything is grouped together. Good point. Okay, now how do how do I hand this back over to you? I uh, I think you just click on your own profile and uh, it's interesting that I can't. Uh, I would expect that I should be able to, but I it doesn't seem to be able to actually request host back. Hmm. Let's see. There we go, make host. I had to click on you and uh, make host. Oh, thank you. And we're all learning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could have, you could have, uh, you know, said no, no. <laughs> I'm very pleased that you didn't. Uh, so I just wanted to, since Co uh, Courtney asked, most, so. <laughs> uh, since Courtney asked about this, I, I thought I had this ex example here, so that gave a bit more uh, of a, so you could see exactly how this revert thing works in that uh, even though we showed it early on, it's a repeat. Uh, Elaine, you're, you're on mute, I think. <laughs> I just want to say, if you can make any of this stuff bigger, that would be great. I'm Because my biggest problem with Iris is the font is too small. And yeah, thank you. Oh, I see. Yeah, no, I think my screen resolution is not just ideal for this. Uh, Shall I see if I can? No, I'm not going to try that now. Yeah, that's a good point. Yay! <laughs> okay, I'll <laughs> mute myself now. <laughs> okay, good point. Yeah, no, I. Uh, anyway, it's, it's still probably a bit small, but but. Um, uh, so so uh, again, I'm, this is a repetition of what we showed earlier, but it was a you know maybe went a bit quicker some of it. So as you see here, we have a, a material that's changed, and then. If you uh, agreed with uh, the uh, coordinates, but or you think now this must be wrong, uh, then you can just revert the coordinates, but you can allow the rest of the data to be submitted. So that gives you a bit more flexibility in terms of how you submit the changes. And the other part that Greg mentioned is here that you can unselect um, those that you don't want to send in at all. And the third option is if you really feel like this particular change here, or let's say this one uh, here, everything is slightly wrong, but you want to make a change anyway, then you could do the export to file option. So you get that entry to a spreadsheet, and then you can make the changes you really wanted, because you know they wanted to make changes, but it was all wrong, or <laughs> what do I know? So uh, I mean, this is obviously going more and more advanced and geeky, but you know, if you want to, you can, and that's the good thing. Uh, what Greg also, uh, which would also mention here, is that you have the uh, uh, show last uploaded files, uh, which is the location where last time you submitted data to the system, the, you can see the file folder there with with all the spreadsheet files. Uh, if you want to look at maybe I don't know really exactly what what you want to might want to do there but anyway that is available for you and uh, and the other options you're probably familiar with but uh, this send log to support is handy and here you can change your pin code and connection string if you want to amend that as well so yeah I think uh, 
that's all we had to share unless you have anything extra to ma ma great uh no i think you uh, covered it pretty well hi havard thank you for um going over this again i had one more question and i'm not sure if you addressed this but I actually don't use the app. I'm just working on the app manager. So when you say pin, is that the same as passcode or is there now a new, did you have to create a pin to log into the, the app? Is that something I'll have to do in order to keep um, updating records in the app manager? Yeah, so uh, the, the pin code is the one you use on the app and, and that would be the same on the app manager. Uh, the, so the only thing you need to do if you don't use the app at all is to, log in once oh no actually when you when you log in here you have the option to say forgot my pin code and then the pin code will be sent to your email address okay so if i can create you just the first time you use the, you install the app manager it will send you a pin code to your email address so you don't and then you go to your email address and you don't you don't need the app or anything else you just need to install it and follow the instructions and you'll receive a pin code and that that will happen even though I have um, Floria App Manager 4.0 installed. When I install yes. 5.0, I'll get okay. Thank you so because much. Because it's, it's a different set of credentials. It's not the ISPG credentials. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, I've managed to get the uh, the app also up and running. I don't know if there was any questions about the app while we're. While we're here together, uh, we have six, five more minutes left. <laughs> um, we, if there are no so questions, actually, yeah, here's one now. Yeah, good. When do you expect to actually release it? Oh, this is available already. Yeah. So, so you can uh, this one you can download from our download page already, um, and then. And it's ready to, and uh, I don't know how many places to already have it installed, but I think it's at least five, six gardens, I believe, at least, maybe more, seven, eight. Uh, so it was made available a couple of days ago. Uh, so yeah. Go ahead, have fun. Um, one thing, uh, I don't know if it's worth mentioning the, the, the new version of the app. There's a few small features that will come there. Uh, I don't know if it's worth mentioning uh, anything that is, uh, do, you, do you, Jose, do you remember anything sort of out of the ordinary that we might mention now when we have everybody here? I, I can't. Uh... Well, one of the advantages is that in the app, you'll be able to see what is going to be sent back without sending it back, for example. And there's uh, several other um, there's more options to filter things in the in the tasks and inspections. There's a number of other smaller features, uh, but there's no big big feature. It's more of a technical upgrade, as you as you said. Yeah, yeah, and one one technical part is also. I don't know if some of you listening in here that have had problems with very large tasks. Uh, we, you know, when you have hundreds and hundreds of entries, so the performance problems around that has been worked on. Uh, and that's part of the technical upgrade as well, that we've changed a number of things around a bit so that it is more performant. Uh, so that uh, also want to flag that we've, we've had a, for those of you who've reported the problem with the iPad and taking pictures, that's been like a, a, a thing hanging over us for a long time. And that's been fixed with already with the version of app that's already out there, but that was one of those very annoying bugs that took a long time to resolve, but that was fixed a couple of weeks ago, I think, should I say, is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. So that was a nice, uh, oh. anyway, so. Um, uh, I was just gonna say, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you can use uh, App Manager version five and the older App Manager, uh, uh, App Manager version together at the same time. So if you want to experiment with the new one, you can download five, try it out, if you don't like it, um, you can, and you, if you're not upgrading your iris to a new version, then you can stick with the old one that you have, but there's, there's a no, there's, a, there's a no guarantees going forward. If you upgrade your iris that the older versions will keep up. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can say for sure that the older versions will not, they, they, they stopped at four, two, three of iris, uh, for practical reasons. So there won't be any 
future updates on the version four of the app manager. Uh, so, so yeah, this is the new new product, um, and uh, hopefully, overall, uh, that you will find it beneficial or better in some way. But as we said initially, the most significant part of this is uh, is from a practical point of view that you will have less of headaches when it comes to managing all the different versions of the different products. Mm -hmm. Sorry, is there a, a version of Iris um, like database software that this doesn't work with? The like older ones, it has to be the most recent. I know that uh, Smithsonian Gardens is like a few updates. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, that's a thank you, Courtney. No, that that's the whole uh, part of the point of this release is that it is very compatible. It goes all the way back several years back in terms of uh, compatibility. Fantastic. Uh, so, so you you don't uh, and we've tested it uh, thoroughly for all the different versions. So, so and that that basically is uh, you now the point is to give you flexibility in deciding when you want to upgrade the different products. You don't have to. Um, Sort of, um, yeah, uh, upgrade Iris because of us and vice versa. Yeah, I can also Thank agree. You. you know, we're we are several uh, updates behind. I think we're uh, what I was showing you was version four point two something. So, yeah, and I, I know quite a few of you have have a sort of quite a what shall I say a large IT system to look after and. And these rollouts are not just a snap of a finger. It's not like one PC. You have to talk to contractors and so forth and so on. So there's a lot of um, extra work involved to roll out an update. And um, so yeah, that's uh, we have empathy for that challenge. So so that's part of the reason we've had made these changes, which took a lot of time and effort, but hopefully that will pay off in the long term. So uh, cool. So a quick, quick, quick question. Are there still are there still issues with folks trying to upgrade to version four in Iris? Well, I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, we wouldn't be able to comment on that. I think in terms of I don't know that that would be a question for Iris, uh, the Iris team. Whether, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know if there's any. Uh, but I, yeah, I'm sure All they're right. doing their best to avoid those kind of problems. Um, yeah. I was just looking to see if there's anything else to add. Uh, Greg, do you have any final comments or any other final questions before we say, um, oh, I could plug our, our for those of you, may, maybe some of you have already signed up, but there is the, uh, uh, our plant records conference uh, in a couple of weeks time. Um, it would be great if you could join that. Uh, that will be on the fifth and the sixth. You will see details on our website. Uh, there's a lot of other events coming up uh, online. Um, everything is online now, I suppose, for a good reason. And uh, anyway, I hope to see you there. Uh, to, just to, uh, I, but since I have a few more minutes, uh, one or 30 seconds, uh, if you haven't signed up, one thing I want to say about that is that we're going to organize that conference as a way of allowing a lot of uh, social interaction through breakout rooms. So, so the whole conference is set up of a short presentation where the presenter will uh, talk about a problem they're going to they are struggling with or they find difficult or would like some input and then the conference will go into small breakout rooms where we will discuss our experience with this uh, each breakout rooms will then come back to the conference and share their conclusions uh, so it's a quite a different format uh, it's similar to what we've done uh, when we've had face to face conferences but we didn't sort of break out in small groups all the time. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that uh, works in terms of uh, if we get that feeling. But the breakout room will be, I think, uh, five people max. So so you at least get a chance to talk to somebody and uh, share ideas. And yeah, so I look forward to that. So that's on the well, details on our website. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for joining. And uh, then I'll wish you all a happy fall or autumn or spring. If there's, I'm not sure we do have anyone from the Southern Hemisphere today, but if you're watching the recording <laughs> and uh, and then we'll see you. Uh, we have our, uh, I want to plug then finally also our free monthly webinar. I think we scheduled one for December, but we put that on our website. So if you're not subscribing to our blog, do that and then we'll, you get notified.
when that uh, will come up. So uh, great. Then thank you very much for joining and speak to you soon.